Hello. Uh, we don't have a clock exactly like yours because uh, you have a really rare 124 movement. We, we don't see those very often. Uh, but I think by showing you some of these other clocks, I think you can get the idea. I hope. If, if not, let us know. Um, you're going to need like a regular size screwdriver, not huge, but not little, and uh, a pair, pair of pliers about this size, not big giant ones, but you might could get by with sort of big ones. First thing you need to do is take the hands off. Um, I believe your clock has a pin that holds the hands on just in case that it doesn't um, this clock has a, a nut and all you have to do is hold the minute hand figure out which is the minute hand and just turn the nut enough to loosen it take the nut off and then the minute hand will just fall off And then uh, the hour hand, it just slips on there. So just kind of turn it back and forth and pull out and, and it comes off. I'll show you one with a pin. This is probably, yours is probably like this one. It has a taper pin and uh, what you need to do is look at the pin and figure out which is the fat end and which is the skinny end and then uh, push the skinny end toward the middle and it'll just come out in your hand. If there's a hand washer, same thing with the other one. Some of them have them and some of them don't. Some have two or three. Take the hand washer off and just lift off the minute hand, just comes right off. In our hand, same thing, kind of go back and forth and gently pull and it comes right off. Next thing you need to do. This is a Seth Thomas, incidentally, and it, it's probably, uh, these are clocks that we have to take apart anyway and to clean and overhaul the movements. Um, what, what you need to do is locate four wood screws. Now that, not, definitely not these nuts here that hold the movement together but back way in the back back there that goes into the wood there'll be four big wood screws this one has got some smaller wood screws that hold the dial on not those but the ones that are sort of big I'll try to do it with the clock standing up so that you can see better to lay the clock on its face like that. Let's see if we can move the camera around so you can see. I don't I don't think so. But I'll just kind of hold it. Might be jiggly. I'll locate one of those wood screws and uh, Put your screwdriver in and then keep turning until it comes out. Here's the second one. Now yours might be, you know, not at the corners. This one's at the corners, but maybe yours might be at the side or something. You just have to look for it. Here's another one here. 
most of them have four. But once in a while a Westminster movement like yours might have maybe more. So if you take out the four and the movement don't come out easily, that means there's probably one or two more. And then here's the last one down here. Then just reach in and carefully grab the, the movement. Try not to touch any of the wheels or gears and just lift it out. And the screws are still where they were. If, if some of them are different shapes and they're not all exactly the same, uh, you might want to lay them on your workbench or your table in the order they were so you can put them back in the same holes. Sometimes these holes here get get worn over a hundred and some years and uh, the screws, sometimes people put bigger screws in there so it holds it nice and tight. So they might be different sizes. And that's it. So that's getting the movement out. Basically, take the hands off, which isn't too hard, and take those four wood screws out. Now, I don't have that 124 movement. It's like yours. Yours would be square, and this is a round movement. That's a New Haven. hope this isn't coming out blurry. We're still trying to learn how to use this camera. Um, it has three trains. Uh, one, one train is the time and another train is the strike and another train is the chime. This one has the chime over here. I think maybe yours has the chime over here. This this movement needs cleaning, so it's not going to really work properly here in, in my hand, but I'll give her a try. Uh, Take your pliers and advance the hand. Now this is a different movement. I don't have the hand for this one. But if you were, uh, the best way to do it is to take the hand that you took off and reattach the minute hand here. So all you have to do is advance the minute hand. You don't have to fool with it with, uh, with pliers. But since I don't have the hands for this movement, I'm just going to do it this way. Incidentally, this is the front of the movement. The, the back is over here with the... need to look at the front. That's the reason we took it out. Okay, that's the chime started up. So it did uh, four notes. So that's on the quarter hour. And what you want to do is do this several times and just watch what the movement is doing and see if you can figure out how it does it. Every movement is different. Yours will do it differently than this one. So I can't really show you But you said your chime was working fine, so I'm not worried too much about the chime. Mm -hmm. 
Now this time we're going to go strike the hour. Now this, this yours and this one has what's called a rack and snail. This is the snail, looks sort of like a snail. And the rack is over here with all these little uh, pointy parts on the side. This is for the strike. Now the uh, this little lever is going to go that away if it's working right. Not sure if it is since we haven't fixed it yet. And then the rack will fall. This little arm here is going to fall into the snail and and whichever one that part of the snail it goes in tells it how many times to strike. So looks like it's going to fall here. The further it has to fall, the more times it's going to strike. So way at this this end is only going to strike once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So maybe it'll strike ten. First the chime will go. Sixteen notes. Then it'll automatically flip over to the to the strike. There the rack fell. Okay, now it should have started going automatically. I had to give it a little push because it's dirty. Now your best bet is to count how many times the hammer moves. Notice these little pins are raising the rack. Okay, once it gets to the end, that lever goes in here and it stops. Now, I guess it went 10. I wasn't counting because I was talking. But that would be 10. Here's 11. And here's 12. Uh, when it falls down at the very deepest one, you should get 12. That's the one that she said doesn't do anything, which I don't understand how it could possibly do that. But you might see, uh, you might say, oh my goodness, there's a there's a piece of dust here or a piece of chewing gum or who knows what might be here in the way or something that maybe is keeping that from falling uh, when it gets to the 12. Generally if it strikes the other ones it's going to strike 12 just because it, it's in, a, in order. So you might see what the problem is and then you can email us and say I found the problem and tell us what you saw and we can tell you how to correct it. If you could possibly send a video of the clock striking like like we just did, we could watch it and try to figure out and help you figure it out. Uh, if that's not possible, if you could just send us back the movement, just take the movement here, wrap it up in several layers of bubble wrap, if don't be real tight with the bubble wrap. And then if something gets bent or something gets a little out of adjustment, we'll we'll fix it back for you. So I, I hope this helps some. Um.